Hello everyone, my name is Christopher. I am a nurse here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, working at the University of Minnesota Hospital, and I'm also uh, here with Nurse Think. And today I wanna show you, just take a couple minutes, how you as a student can use your Nurse Think notebook in the classroom and how you can use this to study and prepare yourself for lecture as well. Um, so just point out a few key points here. If you're not familiar with our Nurse Think notebook, you can head to our website, nursethink.com, click on the student resources or the student tools tab, and uh, there are some videos about the Nurse Think notebook on there as well for you to reference. So today, um, just a couple quick notes about the Nurse Think notebook. First of all, when you are using this to prepare for class, uh, or even within the classroom, there's a couple of things I wanna point out here. You'll notice at the top that we have a couple boxes by the name of related concepts and related exemplars. Um, you may or may not know the difference between the two related concepts. Concepts are general terms. Those are kind of umbrella terms. So um, that would be like gas exchange, oxygenation, um, circulation, all right, emotion. Um, sexuality. Those are some concepts and under those concepts are a lot of different exemplar and diseases and that's over here. So a specific exemplar or specific disease would be asthma or COPD and those may be under oxygenation as a concept. So when you are completing your Nurse Think Notebook page, we have these up here at the top. So when you're preparing for your lecture, maybe you're going over cardiac. So you're looking at a lot of different exemplars of diseases that have to do with cardiac output or maybe that have to do with circulation. Um, so those would be a concept. We, we want you to be able to help kind of tie together um, general concepts uh, and not just focus on specific diseases because um, it, it, there's a very good chance that if you know one disease process, it's really gonna help you out in other disease processes, especially when it comes to endocrine. Think about this. Um, if you know everything about SIADH, all right, syndrome of inappropriate and diuretic hormone. If you know everything about that and how it, um, it retains fluid, it doesn't allow your, your kidneys to excrete the fluid properly. Um, you basically know everything about diabetes insipidus, which is the complete opposite of SIADH, except everything is reversed. All right, and, and that's in a general, that's a general statement. Um, but that's why we want you to be putting those related concepts, those related exemplars up top. And at the end of this video here, I wanna show you uh, an example that we have. We do have some samples, of, of just examples of how other people have used their notebook. It, it doesn't mean that it's the correct answer. Um, and everybody, every patient is different. So just because you may have written something down in your notebook and your classmate didn't, that's okay. Um, we encourage you to um, really just focus on what you think are the priorities based on your clinicals or your classroom experiences, all right? So then you come down here to the next two boxes, reading resources, and then you have your class lab and clinical over here on the side. Um, so these two boxes are really meant for you to take notes during your class and help prepare for your class. So when you're studying, here's, here's, here's the key, key thing here, guys. When you're studying, you have to study as if you are sitting next to a patient, all right? Um, so my virtual background is, is a hospital room here, kind of a uh, animated render of a, of a hospital room. And that's because we want you to be studying as if you're taking care of that patient. So as you're reading through the 20 page chapter, all right, about heart failure, the different types of heart failure and cardiac output and ejection fractions, what's really gonna benefit you the most if, if you can go through that information and really pay attention to any information that directly applies to patient care, all right? It directly applies to patient care. You should be thinking, what do I need to know that is going to help me take care of the patient at the bedside? What are some things that I need to know that when I'm standing next to the patient who's having um, a heart failure exacerbation, what are some things I need to have in the forefront of my mind in order to uh, safely and effectively care for that patient? Um, so a lot of times, um, you know, med surge books have 
um, boxes on at the side or anything. I mean, this is pediatrics. I mean, this could be an OB uh, mental health disorder, um, whatever the case is. A lot of times they have helpful acronyms. Uh, they try to simplify things. A lot of times those are really great areas to focus on. But other areas would just be write down information you don't know about this disease process. Maybe you know about heart failure because you have a relative who has heart failure, so you just know a lot. Then just really focus on writing down information that you do not know related to heart failure. And you may say that's kind of a silly thing because you probably feel like you don't know anything in nursing school and I've been there with you. But there's another part to this Nurse Think notebook that I'm gonna share with you that I hope helps that a little bit. So let's say for example, up here, this, this page is arteriosclerosis. Um, but since I'm just using a sample chapter here, let's say this was nicotine abuse, all right? Um, let's say that you're in your fundamentals class and you're talking about oxygenation and you're talking about how does uh, smoking one pack of cigarettes for 40 years, how does that impact your oxygenation over time? How does it being addicted to nicotine uh, affect a person over time? All right, so you could open up your Nurse Think notebook to the nicotine page and jot just a few bullet points down, all right? Uh, be wary of, of copying everything out of your textbook or copying everything out of your PowerPoints because that information is accessible to you, but really prioritizing key things related to patient care. And, and down here we have a couple boxes related to patient care. So it's kind of stuff that you would not put in these boxes, just extra details, risk factors, environmental factors, a lot of other things uh, that you could write down in here. So back to nicotine abuse. You're in fundamentals, oxygenation, learning about a patient who, you know, smoked for 40 plus years, one pack a day. Maybe you're in a long-term care setting and you're caring for a 80-year-old who smoked for 60 years and now he or she has lung cancer and um, maybe they're on hospice care right now. So how does that affect, you know, how, how Jot some notes down based on nicotine care. You're not gonna fill in this whole page, probably from your fundamentals class. Now you go into MedSurg 1, let's just say, and I know there's a lot of different programs out there, um, but I'm just gonna use MedSurg 1 and then MedSurg 2 as an example. So MedSurg 1, you're learning about COPD, let's say. Um, return to your nicotine abuse page and um, take some notes down about how um, maybe someone in your clinical setting that you saw, maybe someone in class that you saw, um, that you were talked about in your med surge book, um, how that person if, who smoked for, again, 40 years, maybe a pack a day, who was addicted to nicotine, how did that affect them having COPD? What are some clinical presentations of nicotine abuse that is also similar to COPD? And now you're in med surge too, and you're talking about people who have acute respiratory distress uh, uh, syndrome or um, ARDS, all right, and you are um, learning about how nicotine abuse, how smoking led to this person having ARDS, all right. Again, return to your nicotine abuse page. So instead of having a notebook for fundamentals, instead of having a notebook for MedSurge 1, instead of having a new notebook for MedSurge 2, instead of having a notebook for OB, pediatrics, mental health, this is your one-stop shop. And you really be, you're gonna be able to start building upon the information that you're learning from class to class. All right, taking those priorities down. Moving down to these boxes here, we really want you guys to prioritize top three priority assessments. This is gonna help your clinical judgment thinking. This is also gonna help you study as if you're sitting next to that patient. So when you're in class, all right, and your professor lists out priority assessments, this is a great time for you to jot some notes down. What are those top three priority assessments for somebody uh, who has nicotine abuse or maybe who is in an asthma exacerbation, for example? What do you wanna be looking for? What would be some interventions that you could do? Again, top three. Top three, we always go back to top three, all right? If you have a fourth or a fifth that you, uh, that you wanna put in there because you feel like it's absolutely important, totally understandable, but really trying to get to those top three because when you're standing at the bedside taking care of that patient and the patient comes into, let's say the emergency department, um, um, can't catch their breath, having an asthma exacerbation, 
you really are, your brain is really going to pull from those top three things to be like, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to be looking for. Here's are some medications, you know, that we can consider giving. And then what would be some complications if we didn't do anything about this? Um, and then of course, collaborative goals. So how can I work with my, uh, the physicians? How can I work with pharmacy? How can I work with social work or speech therapy or physical therapy or my nursing assistants? All right key, key, key factors in taking care of the patient holistically as well. So when you're preparing for class, study as if you're taking care of the patient, focus on information that you don't know, and focus on the information that is pertinent to you standing at the bedside, assessing and intervening and taking care of the patient. Guys, if you get in this habit now and you start studying this way, and even if you're far into your program and you're looking at NCLEX, NCLEX is gonna ask you questions along those lines, all right? They're gonna ask you, here's the patient scenario, you're the nurse at the bedside, what are you gonna do about it, all right? Sometimes it could be, let's just get the head of the bed up, all right? Let's put them in Trendelenburg to um, increase their uh, cardiac output and because their blood pressure is so low. All right, let's get a bag of IV fluids going uh, to help bump up their blood pressure because it's low. All right, those are the types of questions that they will be asked. And also, once you graduate, take your NCLEX and start working as a new grad, this is really gonna be a crucial part of your learning. So I encourage you guys to um, study as if you're sitting next to a patient, really focus on these priorities, all right? Maybe jot down a couple priorities, a couple labs, a couple nursing interventions from your textbook based on what you were reading about, you know, nicotine abuse or based on what you're reading about asthma or heart failure or postpartum depression. Then you come into your class already prepared with a couple key points. And then you learn about that from your professor. Maybe you guys go over a case study and then based on that information, you want to come back to your nurse think notebook and be like, hmm, was this now after hearing the lecture about postpartum depression or asthma today, is this truly, do I think this is truly the first priority assessment anymore? I don't think so. I think this is a higher priority actually, now that I'm learning more and building upon the knowledge I already know. So I encourage you guys, if you're using the paper copies, use a pencil so you can erase and come back. This is going to be messy. All right, uh, this should be filled up with information, but it's gonna be your guys' mess and it's gonna be a good mess, all right? It's gonna have coffee stains on it, all right? Maybe some, uh, maybe some makeup stains. Um, it's gonna have highlighters and different colored pencils and erase marks and rewriting stuff in. And maybe you have three different priority assessments than your classmate has, discuss that with them. Why do they have the assessments or the interventions uh, listed out? And why do you have yours listed out? Maybe you go to clinical and you take care of a patient or maybe you're using a virtual clinical simulation and you take care of a patient who has postpartum depression or asthma or COPD and you're like, wow, based on this true patient care scenario or this case study, this is the assessments and the priority labs and the priority medications I saw from the scenario. Come back to your nurse think notebook, adjust as you need to. Guys, this is a working document. This is really hopefully going to help you guys save time studying and help you be able to prioritize studying as if you're sitting next to that patient. If you need any help or if you have further questions about our Nurse Think Notebook, you can email us at help at nursethink.com. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day and stay safe.